Thanks for being a part of our virtual classroom right here in the Digital Video Technology Program at Florida Panhandle Technical College. In this series, we're going to define photography, we're going to help you understand and take control of your camera, but most importantly, we're going to try to help you understand the limitations and to establish realistic expectations of what your camera can do. Simply spending thousands of dollars on your next camera doesn't in any way guarantee that you're going to take great pictures. As a matter of fact, even entry-level cameras will take great photos under ideal conditions. One of the very first things we like to do as part of this program is to define photography. We like to say that photography is the art and science of capturing and manipulating light in order to make still or moving images. When you watch a movie and you see the credits at the end and they say director of photography, they're not talking about somebody who was taking still pictures, they're talking about the guy who shot the video. So for our purposes, photography is the capture of still images or photographs as well as video. Now you cannot have photography, you cannot capture photographs without light. If you click your camera in a dark room, all you get is black. A camera actually focuses on contrast, and we'll talk about that later. But contrast is the difference between light and dark. So if there's no light, there's no relative dark, and therefore you simply can't capture a photograph. Now our focus in Photography 101 will be to get you out of automatic mode with your camera and into manual mode. The difference being in automatic mode, the camera makes all the decisions. You simply see something you want to take a picture of, push your shutter down halfway to bring it into focus, push it the rest of the way and capture the image and your job is done. Now you can look at the image, show it to your friends, but all of the work as far as the camera is concerned is done. Now in manual mode, it takes a little bit more work, it takes a little bit more education, but it's so much more rewarding and the biggest single difference is that you can duplicate your results over and over. In manual mode, you're simply going to decide what your settings are gonna be for four main things. This is ISO, shutter speed, aperture, and white balance. Now we say that the exposure triangle is made up of the first three, ISO, shutter speed, and aperture. All three of those elements decide how much light and what strength that light will be when it comes into your camera. White balance simply decides what color you're going to look at as white. How often have you taken a picture and everything looks greenish or bluish or perhaps a little pinkish? That's because your white balance was off and the camera is not smart enough to know what should be considered white. Now ISO is the sensitivity of your sensor within the camera. We're going to go into that a little bit more deeply, but for now just know if your ISO is set too high, your photographs will contain noise, an unsightly snowy overlay made up of artifacts from light particles. The shutter speed is exactly that. It's the length of time that your shutter is open allowing light into the camera. A very slow shutter speed allows the capture of images even in low light conditions, such as night skies or celestial photography, while a fast shutter speed helps to freeze objects, making high speed photography possible. Your aperture is the size of the opening in the lens which allows that light to hit your sensor. A wide open aperture allows more light, helping in low light conditions, and also affecting the camera's depth of field, giving photos a creamy, blurry background, also known as bokeh. So all three of these things, ISO, aperture, and shutter speed, control the amount and intensity of light that enters into your camera, thereby determining what the exposure would be. Now when we say a picture is overexposed, it means that there was too much light and generally the picture is blown out or it's white and there's no detail. If it's underexposed, it's just the opposite issue. It's very dark or sometimes very black and you can't bring those details back. Now proper exposure is just that. You, by knowing your camera, have decided how long the shutter needs to be open, how sensitive your sensor needs to be and how big that opening in your lens is going to be which allows in the light. 
Thanks for being a part of our virtual classroom right here in the Digital Video Technology Program at Florida Panhandle Technical College. We've given you a lot of information in a very short period of time, and for right now, we just want you to be familiar with these terms. In our next segment, we're going to delve more deeply into the exposure triangle. We'll take a closer look at ISO, aperture, and shutter speed, and find out exactly how to get a well-exposed photograph. Stick around as we take a look at part two of Photography 101.